I really haven't used this office since I quit my job. Like not seriously, maybe for like a meeting. So I think it'll be really nice to transform this space, make it into a place that feels not just me, but like very intentional, like not just things splattered around, but a place that I can feel comfortable, that I can work in, and that no longer feels like my software engineer office, but instead feels like the place where I write and create. This video has been so many months in the making. Let's just jump in. About a year ago, my husband and I moved into this house and then six months ago, I left my job. Now I was lucky enough during lockdown to be able to work out of this office and to work from home, but I was a software engineer. So I basically thought desk, computer, that's all I need, I'm good. And I never really set up the rest of the space to feel like a place that I wanted to work in. And then once I was lucky enough to leave my job and get to make super awesome, cozy, wholesome, creative videos, I realized I didn't have a space that made me feel that creative energy. I obviously didn't let that stop me. I made a lot of videos in my kitchen because I love to bake and I would edit sort of wherever I found space. But I had this idea, this vision of turning my office closet into a little library nook sort of space. Cause I have a lot of books and I wanted somewhere that I could actually store them. The problem is, well, I do have some theater tech experience. So I know how to use a drill and a mnemonic staple gun. I didn't really know how to build pieces that would support any actual weight and books weigh a lot. So I didn't know where I would find the time, energy, or expertise to build this little library nook that I had in my head. Last summer, I was supposed to go on a trip for about a week and then it fell through and I was really disappointed. So to cheer me up, my husband told me that in secret, he had measured my closet and calculated how many Ikea bookshelves we would need to fill the space and that he had been planning on making the little library nook for me while I was out of town, which was really sweet. And this idea was just so exciting for me because for some reason I hadn't thought about, oh, we can just use pre-made bookshelves to make what we want. So all of a sudden the path forward was clear. And so when my husband asked if I wanted to help him since I wasn't going to be going on the trip anyway, of course I jumped at the opportunity. And then what started out as a little simple closet redo, just it, it spiraled out of control, honestly. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself again. So let's just start at the beginning. The first day of this project begins where I'm sure a lot of these types of projects do at Nikea. I'm going to check in via text so they will bring our shelves out to us. Awesome. We're here at Ikea to pick up the shelves that James ordered online for my office. It's true. <laughs> Shelving acquired. This Subaru can fit so many shelves, especially with the front seat pushed all the way up and folded <laughs> forwards and then chain the XL to the back seat. Deciding to take the claim of this Subaru can hold so many shelves to heart, Jane suggested that we go inside to find some cube storage for an unrelated project. And this is a fine idea at the surface, except for it put me right in viewing distance of the IKEA showroom. And I saw a lot of fake plants. And that got me thinking, we're buying these new bookshelves. Shouldn't we have some decor to go on them? And so then we made the mistake of going through the entire Ikea showroom and found the piece of furniture that would just increase the scope of the entire project. So that one can also move. we bought a sofa couch for my office. It needs to fit in here somehow. It definitely looks like this isn't gonna happen. So James is inside the store asking if they can hold on to two of the boxes for us while we take the third one home with us because all three won't fit in our car at the same time. At this point, James came back and told me that the store was willing to hold on to two of the sofa boxes, but only until closing, which was about an hour away. So we rushed home with the boxes that we had, unloaded them as quickly as we could and got back to the store just in time. And then we realized that the two boxes that we had left there might not even fit on their own with the rest of the car empty. So we struggled and struggled until finally. Ha, we did it. <laughs> I knew we could. From there, it wasn't too hard to unload the boxes into our house, although we were completely exhausted afterwards. Moving on to day two, it was time to organize the room that all this new furniture was going into. Please don't judge me. Oh, the door won't open. Oh, 
Hey Sherry, how's it going? Uh, so for those who don't know, my parents recently moved, which means that they gave me all of my childhood box type things. This is the air mattress that we have extra guests stay in, and there's a blanket on top. So air mattress, blanket, pillow in there probably. That is my fabric stash and other sewing things. This is my closet. I think it's a really inefficient use of space, which is why we are changing some stuff up. Yeah, this needs a lot of work. This is the corner that you see when I film videos because it looks okay. Here's what I'm thinking. I think the first step is to get the sofa couch in over here <laughs> behind the camera. So the first thing that I should do is take everything that's in this back corner out. I love this scrap fabric. I think it's from, yeah, it's from 2009, but I love it so much. I can take this box, which is gonna stay back here. After we get the couch in, I'll put that like back there. The sewing stuff I can put back there. That's eventually gonna be on bookshelves. I'll take the recliner downstairs to its new spot. So this is my recliner. I never use it. It's mostly had stuff on it for the past couple of months. So I think it's gonna go downstairs so people can sit and actually watch TV in it. This quilt, me and my best friends made uh, senior year of high school right before we left for college and I still have it. So I know that for this, the top half pops out and the bottom half is very heavy, but I can at least get half of it probably. I don't remember how it unlocks. Hold on. Found the husband. Yeah. And there we go. Nice. Where is the top? You got it? Hey, yeah. Oh, it's at the back too. It's not bad. We just have to keep rotating it sideways to go through doors. With the left side of my office cleaned up, it was time to build the sofa bed. Should be easy, right? So this is currently our uh, front door situation. Don't hurt yourself. Ta-da! Couch! Just so everyone knows, my office is on the second floor. We just brought all this up. Now we're gonna go rest. It's 10 p.m. on our first building day, which is my bedtime, but somebody wants to build the sofa. We both <laughs> want to build the sofa. <laughs> Don't sell me out. You're the one who's like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. I can do I'm it. I'm the one who goes to bed at like 1230. It's a good point. It's my bedtime. It's your bedtime. But I'm going to help you. I'm putting the choice up to you. I'm going to help you. Okay. For like 45 minutes. And then I'm going to bed. We want four short bolts. According to instructions, we are lifting this whole thing up. So today is day three of the office project uh, since we finished the sofa yesterday. Today I'm going to take all this stuff and move it over here and then start unpacking the closet over here as well.
It's incredible how much stuff I managed to accumulate in my office. Although to give me credit, a lot of it's just from my childhood home, but now I was responsible for finding a place for it. I am exploring how these doors come off. All right, yep, screwdriver. All right. Oh yeah, that's heavy. Yep. Woo! Okay, it's nighttime and I got my tripod back, so that's cool. I think one of my favorite things about organizing like this is the memories that resurface. I found an old journal, old crafts that I had tried to start, holiday decorations. It takes a while to sort through everything, but it's nice. It's almost cathartic. Okay, so this actually, I remember this was like really hard to get in here. Oh yeah, well, we should take this out first yeah. then. I cannot state how badly DIY'd this closet was. The shelves were plywood, there were two by fours nailed into the walls, at least I think they were two by fours, it's been a while since Cedar Tech class. And the main shelving in the middle there had kids drawings and marker on it, which was kind of cute, but just not what I was going for. I was really excited to get the closet down to basics. And then of course we had to vacuum. I have so much footage of us vacuuming and that's not even all of it that we did, just what I captured. I could make a whole video of just us vacuuming. Now that the closet was basically empty, it was time to buy some stuff. A crowbar, which James knew would be useful for removing things, some decor, and what I was most excited about, the wallpaper. I don't know what I'm doing. Hey. Oh, this is why there's trim at the bottom. Why? Because the boards are cut hardly and there's a big gap. Oh, that room. Well, that's why my take card is Yeah. 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 I can do that. And then after all of that, we went to a Goodwill and found some organizing things for the bookshelves. I'm gonna see how fast I can assemble this bookcase. No back, no uh, adjustable shelves, just the frame and the things that lock the frame in place. We knew we wanted to hang some things and add some more nice details to the closet wall, so we stopped by Home Depot to grab some supplies. Hey James, hey James, hey James. Yeah? I wanted a drill for 10 years. And now and we have one. We have one! 
ignore the cactuses those are for a different project but here is the Home Depot haul we got this nice PVC trim and a saw to cut it with for the outside we got uh, drills to drill pilot holes in things yeah very exciting so you see this stripe at the top of the closet here that seems to be old paint underneath where the trim and the white paint are so James and I want to paint that obviously because we hate how it looks and we were down the crawl space and we found some old paint samples now uh, almost certainly it's like the owners before us wanted to paint and were checking out samples and maybe opted not to. We're not sure, but uh, this stirred together, so I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Gotta be better than the green. I don't know where our outside painting tarp is, so the backing from the wallpaper will have to do. Remember, I'm not an expert. Don't do this. Oh, that does not match. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't match at all. That didn't work. Had a nice little Fred Meyer trip. Got some more wallpaper. Now I'm gonna go home. Today we're gonna figure out this outer wall situation. James and I have decided that we are going to replace it with wallpaper. Uh, we got a nice, hopefully neutral enough wallpaper that's gonna look good against the white of the bookshelves, the white of the rest of the room, white of the trim, and also not look too busy uh, with the watercolor flower pattern. So I'm just going to clear off this wall, which basically just means this picture. I don't know where I'm gonna put this. Gotta remove the hanger. Um, well, guess I need the hammer for that. So where is the trim going? Is that a like? Here? Like flush with the edge or overhanging yeah. the edge a little bit? Uh, I guess overhanging just a stitch. This is what we got at Home Depot. We got a saw and a thingy that we can put the thing in and the saw in and then cut at the correct angle. So that should be interesting. We did it! Well, James did it. I helped. Mm. Hey, we got a corner! <laughs> The process gets a little bit fiddly here. Basically, there was this existing trim in the center of the wall that while I tried to remove it with a crowbar, I didn't. And so we realized that the new trim that we had bought needed to sort of slide into or over the existing trim so that it didn't look too funky. So we traced kind of the silhouette of the existing trim onto the new trim, and then we used a wood carving knife, which I bought for a video project that I actually haven't released because the thing I was carving didn't turn out very good. Anyway, um, and we cut out the silhouette so then the trim slotted really nicely onto the old trim. And this is where we stopped, at least for a little bit. My sister and her friends were coming into town and one of her friends needed to sleep in my office. Like I said before, usually we would just put up a third guest on an air mattress, but that was the whole point of the sofa bed, that we didn't need that anymore. But because of that, we kind of just had to get the room into working order. We got the bookshelves filled with my book collection so it wasn't on the floor anymore. We put a bunch of the boxes that had sort of been crammed in the corner in the empty space behind the bookshelves. And to be fair, our guests did say that we had a very comfortable secondary guest room. And then after they left, we were just so tired. I don't know if it's obvious from the footage, but we were exhausted working hours and hours every day after James had already worked a full-time job just to get this room in a condition for people to stay with us. So we took a bit of a break, but eventually we did pick it back up. I had made a macrame planter following best dressed tutorial. We hung the clock I inherited from my great grandma and a nice framed dish that we got at a moving sale. You can see the hanging software. I mean, that's fine, right? It's also hardware, not software. Oh my God. The hanging decor I was most excited for was my pin collection. I had displayed them in our old place on some canvas hangers that I had gotten for a gift, but I had an idea to use embroidery hoops to display them. Very Pinteresty, 
Yes, but also I love them, so who cares? I sorted the pins by which ones would look nice on each fabric and even used the canvas hangers as backing to make sure that they were nice and sturdy. And then the back corner of my room was really dark, so we put up a light. And that's pretty much it. This project took forever to do and film and edit. So if you liked it, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and maybe you can, I don't know, watch some other videos and decide whether or not to subscribe. But in the meantime, here's the reveal. I absolutely love this office now. My sister described it as a kind of museum of me and I just love that phrase and I couldn't agree more. The colors, the textures, the little doodads in my books, it's all just from different points in my life and I absolutely love looking around and just seeing my space. I'm so grateful to my husband James for starting this project and to you for watching it. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. That's all for now. So until next time, cheers. Wow. <laughs> what a long video.